What is going on everybody? Who you're here. And in today's lesson, we're going to be using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to build out a landing page for an NFT marketplace. And we're going to be doing it completely from scratch. Then towards the end, we're going to spice it up a little bit by adding in on scroll animations as well. Part one is going to focus on the navigation as well as the hero section. And we're going to be adding in media queries as we go along to make this website completely responsive. Then this is going to be the mobile navigation. If we click the X, it will close. If we click outside of it, it will close as well. I'm also adding in a class to the body that is going to prevent the user from scrolling the page if it's currently open. And if we resize the window, once we get to the larger screens, if the navigation uh, is open as well, it's going to close it, which is not something that a user is going to do in the real world, but just thought I would add it anyways. So taking a quick look at the design itself, this is the design that we are going to be building out over the next couple of videos. Um, quick disclaimer, it is by UI Hut, so you cannot use it for personal use or commercially. Uh, because you do need a license. In this particular situation, we're going to be using it for educational purposes only. So if you guys want to make sure that you do not miss part two, subscribe, hit the bell icon so that you get a notification next time a video is uploaded. If you found the video useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up because it helps me a lot. Now, without any further ado, let's jump right into the tutorial. All right, so for those of you that want to follow along, make sure that you grab the asset files from the link in the description below. That's going to include the main artistry folder as well as the assets. Um, everything else such as CSS, JavaScript, and so on, we're going to be adding in from scratch. So be sure to pause the video, grab the files, and once you're ready, let's continue. Inside of the assets folder, we're going to add two folders, one for CSS, and the other one is going to be for the JavaScript. Then instead of each folder here, we're going to add the respective files. So this one is going to be app.js. And instead of CSS, we're going to be adding styles CSS. And finally, we need one more file, which is going to be the HTML file. To generate a boilerplate, we can just use emit, so exclamation sign, and then we can hit tab on the keyboard, enter, or we can just click here. It's all of them are going to do exactly the same. Now we can go ahead and use the link element to link to the style sheet. So we're going to go inside of the assets folder, CSS and styles. Then we will do the same thing for the JavaScript file, assets, JS, app.js. So there's a few more things that we need as far as dependencies. We need the icons as well as the fonts that we are going to use as well as scroll reveal, but we're going to be adding in uh, those later on. For now, what I'm going to do is just open this in the browser. And let me just bring it down. I also have the reference here side by side, just because I don't want to go back and forth on Figma. So here I'm going to open another tab and I'm going to look for remix icons. And it's going to take a few seconds to load. And once the page loads here, it gives you an example of all the icons that they have. You can also search, for example, house, although it's not even relevant to what we're doing, but to get the CDN link, what you're going to do is click get started. It's going to take you to their GitHub. And then if you scroll down a little bit here, you can grab the CDN link. Then what we're going to do is just go ahead and paste it on top of our style sheet here. And then we can just have a comment. We can say remix icon, or maybe it's just one word. And then here we can say my styles. And um, we need one more thing that is going to be scroll reveal. But like I said, we're going to add that in later on. For now, let's just go ahead and add in the fonts that we need. So let's go back here and now we can just close this and go back to fonts, Google. And the font that we're going to be using is called 
Vietnam. Definitely mis misspelled that. Vietnam Pro, which is this one right here. And we're going to scroll down and we need a couple different um, font weights. So the first one that we're going to grab is going to be for 300. Where are you? Right here. Then we need 400 as well as 500 and 800. And we're only going to be adding in the regular uh, uh, variation. Here we have 500 and then we need the bold one, which is 800. So you have different options here. You can use the link here and just paste it in on the head section of your HTML document. But what I want to do here, or what I like to do instead is just import it in to the CSS. So I'm going to grab the import rule here and back to the project. What we're going to do is go inside of the styles.css file and I'm going to paste it here. And then something else that I like to do as well, just in case I forget, is grab this font family and I'll paste it in here as well. But I like to comment it out and then I just use it later on. And once I have it, I just delete the comment. And um, yeah, as far as the fonts, that's everything that we need. So we're ready to actually start with the project. So what I'm going to do now is actually make this smaller so that we can have both windows side by side and we can see the changes as they're happening. So let me just resize this. Bear with me for a second. And I'm pretty sure there's a simpler way to do this. I know Windows has like a program that you can set up window sizes, but you no, know, I haven't really messed around with it. And um, that should be good right there. So what we can do here is again, we can just close this and we can close this since we don't need it for now. And then we can just minimize this window here so that we have more room to work with. And um, what we're going to do now is just add in all the markup that is going to be for the header and navigation. By the way, this is going to be a mobile first approach. So we're going to be building the mobile side of things um, first. So let's begin with the header. First, let me just add in a comment here. Let me just capitalize this. Again, why do I cl keep clicking that? So header. And then underneath, what I'm going to do is add in the header element, and I'm going to apply a class of header. Then inside of the header, I'm going to have the navigation. So here I'm going to say navigation, or I can just say navbar, same thing. And here inside of the navbar, we are going to have all this data. So that's going to be the search as well as links and this button. And let me actually just keep it open there so that I can see what's going on. And in the main project here, obviously there's nothing yet. So back to this, we're going to be using the nav element. We are going to apply a class of nav as well as a class of container. Then inside of it, we are going to have an anchor tag. And this anchor tag is going to have a class of nav logo. And then we can just link it back to the index.html. By the way, I'm using here BEM. And that's because I usually build out the websites first using um, SAS. And then I just use the compiled version for the tutorials. Um, I'm not going to go into BEM. That's just a naming convention for CSS classes, but again, or methodology, I should say, uh, but I'm not going to get into it. Um, if it, I know it looks kind of ugly and long sometimes, but just bear with me um, for this particular project. Well, not this particular project, but every single other project since that's what I use. However, you can use any class name that you want. So inside of here, I'm going to have an image and this image is going to be inside of the assets folder, images folder, and then the logo. Um, I'm not going to focus into accessibility a lot. So the alt tags are going to be left um, empty. And then for the class here, I'm going to do nav 
logo image. Although I don't even think I use this class right here, but you know, it's whatever. Then we are going to have a div for the overlay that we have right here so that when we click it, it closes automatically. Um, you can do this with pseudo elements, but for me, I'm just going to be using a regular div. And this is going to have the class of nav overlay, like so. Then I'm going to have another div, and this one is going to be the main container for the navigation. So this white background here, and it's actually not white, it's yellowish. And the class here that I want is nav menu. And this is where all the items go, as I mentioned. So we're going to start with the form here for the search bar. And this form is going to have a class of nav form. Uh, we're not going to be submitting this form, so we can just leave that open or empty, I should say. And then we're going to have a span. And inside of the span, we're going to have the icon. So for this, we can just reference remix icon to see which icon is going to generate, well, which class is going to generate this icon. So remix icon, and then we can just look for search. And here, the one that we're using doesn't really have the broken line, which is this one right here. So we're going to grab this one. And then we can just straight up copy the class. And then we can just paste it in here. Although I should probably keep that open since we're going to be using um, multiple icons. But for now, we can just go back to it later. So as you can see, the icon is now being generated. So the next thing that we're going to do is act, add in the actual input. So this input is going to go underneath of the span. And we can say input is going to have a class of nav search input. It's going to be of type text. And then we can also add in a placeholder. The placeholder is what's going to show here. For example, we can say dogs. And then dogs is going to show up. But obviously, we wanted to say search like so. And um, yeah, I believe that's it for the form. Now we're going to go underneath of the form and we're going to have a UL. The UL is going to have a class of nav list. Then the LI is going to have a class of nav list item. And then we're going to do the same thing for the link. And now that we have the basic structure, of the nav items, what we can do is go ahead and just duplicate this down below as many times as we need. So in this case, we only have three links. First one is explore, marketplace, and then finally we have community. Then what we need is this button. And for this button, we are going to be using an anchor tag or we could have also used the button element. Um, I'm not exactly sure if they use a link or a button, but it doesn't really matter for this example. So we're just going to use the link and this link is going to be having a class of button. It will also have a class of button dark and then nav button. And the purpose of all the classes is so that I can add different styles without having to modify a certain class um, later on. Then inside of here, we can just say, actually, we don't need a new line. We can just say connect to wallet like so. We can just put in a hash in here as a placeholder. And then we need to add in this X button so that we can close the navigation. For this, we can use the button element and we need a couple classes here as well. So the first class is going to be button again, button action, and then just going to call this nav close instead. 
So for the button type here, we can just add, come on. So we can add type button. And then we're also going to be adding in a data attribute. So data, we can say data toggle. And then here we can just say that this one is going to be for close. And we're going to be using the data attribute to select this particular button with JavaScript later on. So we need another icon here. And the icon that we're going to be using is for the X. So back to Remix icon. And we're going to keep it open for now since we're going to be reusing it later. And then we can look for something like close. And we can scroll down and see if there's anything relevant. Here we see the X. We're going to copy it and paste it in. And um, that's pretty much all that we need for this nav menu. The rest of the content that we need to add in is going to be this hamburger menu. So for this, we're going to go outside of this menu. And then we're going to be adding in another button. And since they're going to be almost exactly the same, what I'm going to do is copy it, paste it underneath, going to format it. And I'm using an extension, by the way, I think it's prettier. I'm not exactly sure. Or beautify one of those two, I can't even remember. But we have to make some changes here for this other button, because obviously we don't want to have two X's. So the first change is going to be the icon. So we can look for hamburger. And we can grab this one. It doesn't matter. You can grab any one that you want. And then we can just paste it in here to replace it like so. And then the last thing that we need to do here is change the data toggle to open. And then this one to nav open. And it should have just been this portion like so. And um, yeah, that's pretty much everything that we need for the header. The rest of the markup that I'm going to be adding in now is going to be for the showcase section. So outside of here, I'm going to use the main element. Let me just add another comment, main. And underneath, well, not underneath, but inside of it, we're going to have the showcase section. And then we're going to use the section element. We're going to call this showcase. And then inside of here, we're going to have a div. And this div is going to have a class of showcase container. This is just going to allow me to, again, select a particular element without having to modify a class that I'm using in general uh, for other elements. Then here, I'm going to add a class of row as well as container. And for my layout, I'm going to be using CSS grid. I'm going to be setting up a little 12 uh, column grid system. Um, you can use Flexbox for like simple um, aspects of this layout but I just prefer using grid because it allows me to position the element um, exactly where I want them as opposed to using Flexbox and having to use other things like margins, paddings, and so on. We're going to be placing all the content. So that's going to be this title, paragraph, button, all this data, and this image right here. And I know that this has like an indication that, you know, you can swipe through it, but it's just going to be an image. I'm not really going to focus into making this particular aspect of the website uh, functional. So back to this, well, maybe I should say here because I'm going to copy some of the data. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is go inside of the showcase container and I'm going to be adding another um, div. And this div is going to have a class of showcase text group. Then I'm going to have an H1 because this is going to be the most important uh, text on the website. You're only supposed to have one H1 for SEO purposes. So this is going to have a class of showcase title, title, and then title name. And what I'm going to do now is just copy this and paste it in. And what I'm going to do actually 
is inside of the assets files that you're going to get, I'm going to add a text file that is going to have all the text already written in so that you don't have to copy it um, from scratch. So after the H1, we're going to have this P element and we're going to add a class of showcase paragraph. I know not the most creative class name, but it doesn't really matter at this point. Then we're going to paste in the text and then underneath we're going to have the button. So this button is going to be an anchor tag and it will have the class of button. Another class of actually I'll leave that class for last. So button normal, then another class of button pink, and this should be double hyphens. And the class that I said that I said I would leave for last, which is going to be showcase button like so. And everything looks good. Now I can just say create NFT. Let's take a look so far. It looks pretty good. Then we need all this data right here. So this is going to be a separate container div still within the text group. So right here, let me just go underneath the anchor tag. And then we can just call this showcase stats like so. And inside of here, we're going to have different headings. So this one is going to be an H2 and it's not going to have a class name. I'm just using it for grouping purposes and the heading styles. What we're going to be styling is the spans inside of them. And um, in here, I'm going to do a class of showcase stats stat. Then another class, which is going to be showcase showcase stats stat count like so going to paste that one, that one underneath and I'm going to change the last bit here from count to category. And this one is going to have the text of 27 K. This one artworks. The rest of them are going to be exactly the same. So we can just duplicate them down. And now all we have to do is just change the data. This one is artist. And the last one is going to be 19. And this one is for auctions. Like so. So the last thing that we need here is going to be this group here for the image. So we're going to, again, just do the same thing that we did here. And we're going to find the closing one, which is this one. Remember, you're still inside of the main container. And what we're going to do here is just change text to image. So showcase image group, even though it's not really a group, but just to keep naming consistent. And in here, we're going to be using the picture element. And this is going to allow us just to serve different images based on the size of the screen. So for example, on the smaller version, uh, we can have a smaller image. And once we get to larger screens, we can switch out the image to a larger, higher resolution one. So here we have to specify a source. If I, if I can actually type it in correctly and then media, and then in here, we can specify basically a breakpoint. And I'm going to be using M units uh, just because they're relevant um, relative to the browser font size. So in here, we're gonna do min width since this is a mobile first, and we're gonna be doing 64 M. Now we have to use the source set attribute so SRC set, and then we're going to go inside of the assets folder, then images, 
and then showcase image large and then PNG. So if I was to go here to the demo, it doesn't really show up, but it should show up once I make it bigger. And it doesn't. So let me just double check. Oh, well, I still have it in, added in the main image. So image and then assets, images, and then showcase image. So here we have the larger image now showing up as you can see it goes back to the smaller one so that's basically how that works you can have as many images as you want and serve them to different devices and um yeah that's going to conclude the html portion of this particular lesson uh let's now go back inside of the css file so that we can actually make this look more like the demo so again, we're going to start first with this. Well, we can close this. We don't need it anymore. We're going to start with the header as well as the navigation. And here we already imported the fonts. So we're going to start with a basic reset. So I'm going to add in a comment of reset. And then in here, I'm going to reset basically the margins and paddings. But before that, let me just add in some custom properties or variables, whatever you want to call them. Custom properties. And we're going to start by selecting the root of the document so that it kind of works like global variables, basically. And we're mostly just going to be using variables for the colors, um, number of columns and font weights and uh, using variables it just makes it easier so that let's say that later on you want to change uh, the color scheme of your website you can easily do it here and it's going to take effect in every place that you use this variable as opposed to doing it manually every time so the first one is going to be the light color and for this we're going to be using hsl which is um it's going to be a lot more flexible. For example, if I have a hover effect, I can just use a different shade of the same color by just controlling uh, the, the lightness. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to paste in the colors that I have. So this is going to be for the light color, which is going to be for the white. And the next one is going to be for the dark color. And um, actually, I'm going to paste everything in just to save time. I'm going to be including all the variables, by the way. I'm not going to have you typing them in just like one by one. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to be including all of them that I have here. So as you can see here, I have colors uh, for white, black, and then all the accents as well as pink, yellow, you know, which is all the colors that we're going to be using for this project. Then I have a variable here for the nav height, just because I'm going to be doing a little bit of math with it later on. And then here I start with a number of columns variable uh, by default on the mobile screens, we're going to start by four. Then on tablets, we're going to have eight. And then on larger screens, we're going to have 12 columns. And this is pretty, uh, pretty self-explanatory. This is going to be for the font weights. Um, something else that I'm going to do here is add in the breakpoints. So the first breakpoint that I'm going to use is going to be for tablets, which is going to be 48 M. So I'm going to do add media. And as I said, I'm using M's just because it's relative to the browser font. So add media, and then we can say min width. And what we're going to do, well, I forgot to add and is add in 48 M. Then I'm going to duplicate this down below. And the next breakpoint is going to be 64. 64, not 54. And here, what I want to do is just change some of the variables that I have here. So for example, this number of columns. So here I'm going to select the root again. Paste this in, 
copy it from here and then paste it in here again. So now we can change this to eight and this to 12. Um, it's perfectly fine to just have all these media queries. It actually doesn't really make that much of a difference. So don't worry about it. Like I said, we're going to be writing all the media queries as we go so that we can make the page responsive as opposed to typing in everything and then just waiting until the end to make it responsive. So let's go ahead now and apply the reset. The reset is going to be on everything. So we're going to be using the universal selector. We're also going to be selecting the before and after. Since they are technically not created until you actually create them, using the universal selector here is not going to apply to them. So you have to make sure that you specify them. And then the after. And here we can do a margin zero, and then the padding zero and box sizing to border box. And this is going to make the math when sizing your elements a lot simpler. So now that we have this, we don't really need it anymore um, because we already copied all the data. So let's just focus on the design here that we have. Then I'm going to select the HTML document. And what I'm going to do here is make the root font size 16, uh, 10 pixels. Uh, since I'm going to be using rem unit, it's going to work a lot better when it comes to doing the math. However, I'm going to specify it in percentages just because it's going to help when scaling using the zoom feature here. And then I'm going to select the body. The body is going to have some base styles. So for the font family here, actually, I could have just copied it from here. Let me just delete it. So here the font family is going to be Vietnam and it's going to have a backup of sans serif just in case that this font is not available. Then I'm going to apply a font size that is going to be the general font size of 14 pixels. So I'm going to do 1.4 rem and then a base line height of 1.5. As far as the color, this is going to be the dark color. So for this, we can just use the variables like so. And then we can now move down and add in the same media query here of 48 M. And this is just going to modify some of the styles for the body. In this case, it's just going to be the font size. So we're going to go from 14 to 16 like so. Then what I'm going to do is go ahead and select all of the anchor tags. And then the color is going to be inherited and the text decoration is going to be set to none. Then we're going to be selecting the UL and here the list style will be set to none. This is going to get rid of the bullet points. And then we're going to select the image as well as the picture element. And we're going to give this a display of block so that it gets rid of a little spacing that it has on the bottom. And then we're going to give this a max width of 100% just so that it doesn't overflow its parent container. Finally, we are going to style the inputs. So we're going to have some base styles for that as well. So the input as well as button and then the font here font where are you font inherit then the background color is going to be transparent border none and then the outline is going to be set to none as well i'm going to select all of my i elements which is going to be for the icons and the font size is going to be 2.4 rem and then the line height is going to be the same and this is just going to help later on uh, with alignment purposes finally we're going to target every single section and that's because of the animations that we are going to have later on we're going to give this an overflow of hidden since we're going to be having elements just floating away 
Um, here, it doesn't really matter as much, but if you had them, for example, horizontally, it would create horizontal scroll lines. So this is just going to prevent that. I'll show you guys later on. And um, yeah, that's pretty much everything that we need for the reset. Uh, let's go ahead and um, start with the header. Although we're go also going to have a reusable classes section. So reusable classes. And then we're going to come back to that later. So header. Here we can select the header and we can apply a position of absolute mostly because I want this header to be floating on top of the hero section. Then we're going to specify that the starting top position is going to be zero. Same thing with the left. And then we want to give this a C index of a really high value just so that we make sure that it stays on top of all the content. And then finally, we're going to give this a width of 100% since the moment that you make it a position of absolute or fixed, it's going to lose its width. Now we can target the nav. And the nav is going to have a display of flex just so that we can have them side by side. Then I want to align my items to the center and then justify content space between for separation. It looks kind of messy right now because of all the content on top of it, but we're going to be sorting that out in a little bit. Now, as far as the padding right here, I'm going to be using padding block and padding block just refers to padding top and bottom. And this is just going to be the nav height, nav height variable. Then what I want to do now is select the overlay itself. This will have a position of fixed. We're going to do an inset of zero. It's just going to correspond to the top, left, right, and bottom. Background color here, we can just use an RGBA. And it's going to be black. So zero, zero, zero. And then for the alpha or transparency, we can just do 0.8. Now we want to make sure that we turn that off uh, so that we can't see it unless we trigger the navigation. So we're going to give this an opacity of zero. Opacity only hides it from view. It's still there. So what we're going to do is give this a visibility of hidden. Now we want to transition this later on so that it animates in. And what we want to transition is the opacity over 0.25 seconds as well as the visibility. Then we're going to target the nav overlay again. And then we're going to say that when it is active or it has a class of active, this class we are going to add in with JavaScript later. What we want to do is change the opacity back to one and then the visibility back to visible. And I'll quickly show you how that's going to look. So for example, let's find the overlay here. If we add the class of active, notice how it's going to now show up. But obviously we don't want to hard code that in. We're going to be using JavaScript for that. The next thing that I want to do is now style the menu so that we can make it look more like this. So we're going to say nav menu. And this is going to have a position of fixed as well. Top here is going to be zero, right, zero, and then to stretch it all the way to the bottom, we're going to set the bottom to zero as well. And then for the background color, we can do the accent color. As you can see right there, it's showing up. For example, if I get rid of the bottom, it just goes back to fill the content. Then what we're going to do is give it some padding. This padding top and bottom is going to be 5.4 rem and then 1.8 RAM left and right. Then what I want to do is hide this menu from view. So for this, we're going to be using transform translate X, and then we can just translate it by a certain amount. 
Oh, for example, I forgot to specify a width here. The width is going to be 27 rem, just so we make it slightly larger. And now we can just basically just translate X by 27, which is going to be the width, and it's going to hide it all the way to the right. And we can actually do a little bit more just to make sure. Obviously, we still want to see the navigation just so that we can see the styles that we are applying. So what I'll do is just comment this out. We also want to apply a transition here so that it animates in. This transition is going to be on the transform over 0.25 seconds. Then we're going to select the nav menu once more. And we're going to do the same thing. When it has a class of active, we want to show it. So transform, translate X back to zero. So again, I'm just going to give you a demo back to the index.html. We have the menu here. We add in the class of active. And now the menu is going to show up like so. And um, the next thing that I want to do now is comment this out again so that we can actually see what's going on. We want to style the nav search so that it looks more like this. So nav search. Here we want to give this a display of flex just so that the icon and the input are side by side. Then we're going to align items center so that we can center them. And then we're going to add a column gap for separation. And this is going to be one rep, like so. Then I'm going to give it a padding of one rem all around. We're going to give this a border. This border is going to be zero point, actually we can just do point 15 rem, solid. And then it's going to be the dark color like so and it did not do the variable for some reason so var now it should show up border radius here it's going to be 0.8 rem so what else am i missing here i also need a little bit of margin bottom Margin bottom is going to be one rem. And then we can go ahead and just modify this border right here when it's focused within. And it's not showing up. Let me just hear why it's not showing up. So nav form Let's see nav search nav search oh that's because i have nav search was it that let me just double check oh it should be the form itself nav form Actually, it's a lot easier if I just do this instead, as opposed to having to just rename everything. So nav search. All right, so there it is. So it was just a little mistake there. And what's going on there? Why is it looking so big? Let me just go back here. Yeah, that's so weird. I don't know what that's happening, but uh, we can sort that out later. So what's next? Let me see. So, oh, I, yeah, I said we now when we focused uh, inside of here, we want to change the border color. So we're going to be using focus within for that. So nav, nav search, and then we can do focus within 
And what we want to change here is the border color. And this one is going to be for the pink color. So if we focus with it, now it changes color. So that's working perfectly. Now I'm going to select the nav search icon. Nav search icon. And this will have a display of inline flex like so. Then what I'm going to do is select the search input. And the width here is going to be 100% so that it takes up any available width. Then for the placeholder, I want to animate it in so, so that it fades in when we focus in like it does over here. So for this, what we want to do is select the search input once more search input, search input. And then we want to use the pseudo element here of placeholder so that we can style it. So the font size is going to be 1.4 RAM. The color is going to be inherited. And then we want to transition the opacity. So what we want to do now is that when we focus on the search input, we want to turn the opacity to zero. So let me just grab this and say focus and then placeholder opacity zero. So if we try that out, you can see that it works. The next thing that I'm going to do now is dial this nav list. nav list and i'm going to give this a display of flex now by default it's going to be a row so we want to change the flex direction to column then i'm going to do a gap of 0.5 rem just for some spacing in between them so that's going to be for the items here as far as the search then this group for the nav uh, list here as well Actually, no, that's going to be for the menu itself. Uh, this is going to be for the list. Um, so yeah, like for example, if I made this bigger, you could see the difference. Oh, yeah, now I see my mistake, why it's not showing up. So it's because it should be gap, not padding, should be gap. So now you can see like there's a little bit of spacing there. For example, if I was to make it bigger, you see that it grows, but what we want is 0.5. Then I'm going to select the link and the link is going to have a display of inline block. And then we can just go ahead and apply a padding all around of 0.5 RAM. And then we want to do a transition on the color transition color. And then we can do 0 0.5 0 0.25 seconds. So now we can actually select the nav link when it's hovered. And then we can change the color to whatever color we want. In this case, we're just going to be using the var. That's going to be the pink color. So if we go ahead and hover, you can see that it changes. And now we can move along and style the button. So nav button. And here, I want to give this a display of block so that it, it's going to stretch 100% of the available space. Then I'm going to give this a padding of 1.2 top and bottom, 2.5 here for the um, left and right. And then for the margin top to create some separation, I'm going to be doing 1.5 rem. So now remember that we had additional classes. So this is where they come in. So for example, for this button, we have button dark and uh, the general button class. So let's go ahead and take care of that. But we're going to be doing those inside of the reusable classes comment since we keep reusing it over and over. So we're going to start with the button styles. So by default, I want the buttons to be a display of inline block 
then the font weight, I want it to be the variable or fo uh, font weight medium. Then I want it to have a text align of center. Cursor is going to be pointer. This is going to be for the actual button elements and a border radius of 0.8 rem. And finally, I want to add a general transition here on the background. Then what I'm going to do is select the button dark, button dark. And then the background color here is going to be the dark color. And then we have to make sure that we also change the font to the light color for contrast. Like so. And um, that looks pretty good so far. So now we can just use a variation of the HSL value that we had before. So here we can say button dark on hover. Remember, we use the HSL value here. So let's just grab this. And we can paste it in here for the color. Actually, this one should be for the light one. Oh no, never mind. This is wrong because I'm changing the background color, not the color itself. So this should be for the background color. And uh, what we can do here is just change the lightness slightly. So I'm going to do 19 instead. And now you see that we get a different shade of this color. So that works pretty good. Then what we're going to do is go back down here so that we can actually continue to work on the rest. So what we want to do now is move this X up here. So nav close. This will have a position of absolute. And then the top is going to be 1.8 rem. Then we can do a right and it's going to be the same. And now the button is exactly where we want it to go. So that looks pretty good already. Say so connect wallet. Oh, here I have connect to wallet. So let me just go ahead and delete that. And this is actually capital as well. Not that it makes a huge difference, but you know, just so that everything matches up. And it does right here, it looks pretty good. So let's go ahead now and add in the JavaScript that is going to make this functional. Um, so yeah, let's open up the tab here, go inside of the JavaScript file, make it smaller again. And uh, the first thing that we're going to do here is, well, let's go back to the index that, not the index, but the styles. Uh, remember this comment right here, let's take it off. And now we just see everything that we have here. Um, there should be some spacing here, but don't worry. This is all related to the container classes. Uh, we still haven't gotten to that um, particular part. But in fact, I actually added in here to the nav. So I guess we should take care of it right now. And the container is going to be a reusable class. So let's come here. Container. And the container here is going to have several classes. Well, not several classes, but um, styles, I should say. And first is going to be a max width of 117 rem. Margin in line is going to be set to auto. So that's going to be margin left and right so that we can center the container, container in the middle of the screen on larger screens. And then the padding in line is going to be 1.8 RAM. So now we get the spacing on the sides that I was talking about. So now we can go back to the JavaScript and what we can do here is select the elements that we need. So first we want to select the button open as well as close. So we're going to have a constant variable and then I can just call this button open 
and then we can use document dot query selector and then we can use the data attribute to select it so remember that we used the data attribute so we can say data toggle and then it was going to be equal to open like so uh, it's really important that if you start for example with double quotations here uh, you have to use uh, single quotations here and vice versa just like I did here else it could break it so now I can duplicate this down below change this portion to close and then this one as well and then we also need variables for the overlay so let me just do this overlay and it should be nav overlay actually and then we can just rename this to overlay el short for element and then we need one for the menu so menu el and then this is going to be the nav menu so now that we have that we're going to create a function and this function is going to toggle all the classes on and off so here we can just call this toggle menu um it's also going to toggle the overlay so i guess you could call it something else but this is just what i called it and and here what we want to do is select the menu and then class list toggle and then the class that we want to toggle is going to be the class of active we want to do this two more times and this is going to be now for the overlay as well as the we also need the body because remember that i said earlier in the demo that we're going to prevent the user from scrolling the page so what we're going to do here is say document nope that's not it document dot body class list toggle and then this one is going to be scroll false so for this class we're going to actually add it in right now so we're going to find the body right here we can say body scroll false and then what we can do here is just say overflow is going to be hidden just do overflow y like so and um yeah that's pretty much it for that so let's now um select the button and add in the event listener whenever we click on it so for this we can just say button open and then add event listener and then here we can say that it's going to be a click event come on what's wrong i can't even spell and then here we can just pass in toggle menu we're going to be doing the same thing for the overlay as well as the close close and overlay so right now this should work and it does we get the overlay we click it it goes away and let me just make sure that the other class is being added in right here so scroll false is being added in as well i'm still not sure where this is being zoomed in so much but we'll figure it out later let me just take a look at something really quick so this is definitely more than it should and i think i know what the issue is right here somewhere within the media queries so let me just make this smaller go back to the css file say root font size so here i have 16. yep 
Yeah, so definitely the issue right there. And that's because <laughs> I forgot to change this to the body. It's always the smallest mistake. So when I copied and pasted it from here, I just left that alone. I forgot to change it. So that's like the downside to copy and pasting. Sometimes you just forget. But everything is working as it's intended now, as you can see. Um, so back to this, we also have to make this functional. Um, when in terms of when we resize the screen, for example, like it goes away because right now it's just stay, um, staying there, but everything else works. The button work when we click the overlay goes away, everything works. So what we have to do now is add an event listener here to the window object. So we're going to say window and then add event listener and this event listener that we want to listen for is going to be for a resize event. And then in here, I mean, technically I don't even have to add the semicolon. JavaScript is automatically going to assume that there's one there, but I just added it in anyways. It doesn't really matter. Um, if you want to save a little bit more time, you just don't have to add them in. But like I said, it's just a demo. It doesn't really matter. So now what we have to do is just have an if statement and here we can reference the, the window. So we can say if this and then enter with is greater or equal to 1024, which is the desktop breakpoint, the 64M. Um, 48M is actually 768, by the way. So what, So that's what they mean. And then in here, what we can do, well, actually, we don't need the curly braces at all. We can just have another if statement. Do we? I don't even remember if we can do this, um, but let's see uh, menu el and then class list contains active we want to toggle menu oh this should be outside though fuse there a little bit so now we can open it up. Yeah, if we resize it, it goes away. So yeah, I guess we can do it because um, it's not really multiple um, statements. It's just one line. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much everything we need for the JavaScript. Uh, we still need a little bit more JavaScript uh, with the scroll review library so that we can animate in the content. But I'm not going to do that until later once we make this fully responsive. So back to this, let me just leave it there. This, I was gonna close it, but we need to come back here to add the link for the uh, score review CDN later as well. So I'm just gonna leave it there. Um, so now we can just focus on making this uh, responsive as well as styling the hero section. So we can go all the way down here. And what we're going to do now is add in the media query that is going to trigger this navigation. Well, not trigger this navigation, but make it look nicer on larger screens. And this navigation, I want to make it look um, nicer or like this, I should say. Make it like this only on the desktop view. So for this, we're going to use add media. screen and min width and then 64 em which again it's going to be 1024 pixels and what i wanted to do here is start resetting a lot of the work that we did here so let me just make it bigger so that we can see what's going on like right there. So first we're going to start by selecting the nav logo and the margin right here is going to be, well, we can just do MR for short and then we can do 7.9, 7.9 REM, not REM. 
Then we're going to select the nav menu. And then here we're going to reset everything. So the position is going to be set to initial, the width, initial, background color, transparent, padding, zero, transform, transition, display is going to be flex. And here I want to align my items to the center, like so. Then we're going to go underneath. We're going to select the nav search and then the margin right is going to be 3.2 rem and the margin bottom is going back to zero. Now I'm going to select the nav list. We're going to change the flex direction back to row. And then I'm going to have a gap that is going to be 2.4 rem, like so. Now I'm going to select the nav button. Margin top is going to be zero. And then the margin left is going to be 3.2 rem, like so. So they're starting to look a little bit better. Now we have to uh, hide the icons. So here, nav open. Well, nav close, it doesn't really matter. And then nav open. And this is why having additional classes helps because you don't have to be too specific when it comes to having to select a bunch of things uh, just so that you don't screw something else up later on. And then we can just turn that off like so. And then on even larger screens, what I want to do is just increase this gap right here. So I can just got, uh, grab this right here, paste it underneath. And then we can do 75 here. And then for the nav list, here we can do, can get rid of this. And then we can just do a 4.8 rem here, like so. So now we can go back to the smaller screens and if anything, well, right now I can't see very well because of all this stuff that's in the way, but if by any chance there's something broken, we can always come back and fix it later. And let me just make sure that I get the resizing, resizing just right. So back to the showcase now. We can add any comment showcase. We can select the showcase and we're going to give this a padding top, which is going to be a calculation of the nav height. And it's going to be times two plus 3.4 rem. So that's just going to push all the content down so that it's not right underneath of it. So we're going to multiply the nav height by two, and then we're adding 3.4 rem on top, which is going to be the, uh, the spacing that the design actually has. So it's not just like some random, um, values that I added in. It's actually coming from the design itself. So let me actually double check now. Yeah, this actually looks pretty good. So there's no need to change anything there. Uh, but yeah, back to this. Now I'm going to add a padding bottom. Again, I can just use Emmet. Makes it a lot faster, but I don't know why I don't do that like more often. And then for the background here, we can use a background image, which is going to be a linear gradient. We're going to rotate it by 90 degrees, and then we're going to be using the following colors, which is going to be F, F, E, 8, 6, E, at 50%, and then F, C, 7, 2, 7, 2, at 100%. And that's going to give us the gradient. And as you can see, it's starting to look a lot better. 
and everything still works just fine. Now I'm going to target the showcase container individually. And I'm going to give this a gap. So the gap is going to be the separation between all the items that we have right here. And this gap is not going to be taking effect right now. And you're going to see why. So the gap is going to be 38, 3.8, 35, and then three ramp. So here we're just using the, the show hand. So first value is going to be for the row gap. And the second one is going to be for the column gap, but it's not working. And that's because we're not using display flex or display of grid on this showcase container. And this is where the row comes in. So for the row here, we're going to have a display of grid. Then for the grid template columns, we want to repeat. Then what we want to repeat, why do I keep messing it up? What we want to repeat is going to be the, var the variable with the number of columns. So number of columns. And then we want to make it one fraction each. So that's going to mess it up a little bit as you can see right there. So let me just open up the inspector. As you can see, we have four and they're all taking one. So what we want to do is make sure that they all span whatever the grid number of columns is. So let me just make this smaller again. And then what I want to do is say row and then everything that is a direct descendant, we can say that the grid column, we want it to span by the number of columns. And now this is going to fix it. And that's because I'm not using var here. But yeah, now it's going to fix it. And since these are going to be reusable classes. Let me just delete it from here and move it all the way to the top to the reusable classes section. And for the time being, this is only important on the small screens. Later on, when we get to position things exactly where we want them, we're actually going to change this a little bit. So back to the showcase container, now we can go ahead and style the title, the paragraph and the buttons and so on. So here we can do showcase. Um, what was it? Title. I literally just said it like three seconds ago. I forgot. So for this, we're going to use responsive typography. We're going to be using clamp and clamp is going to take three values. The first one is going to be the minimum. Then we want to make the middle one a certain value that is going to adjust based on the screen size. So here I'll just use five of the VH and then for the maximum size, I'm going to use seven. The line height here is going to be 1.4 rem, not 1.4, it's actually 4.6. Then for the margin bottom, I'm going to do 1.2 rem. Now I'm going to select the paragraph and the paragraph is going to have a margin bottom that is going to be 3.8 rem. Let's now select the showcase stats and this will be a display of flex. Then I'm going to add a column gap here for separation and it's going to be 3.8, like so. Then what I'm going to do is select the showcase stats stat, and I'm going to make this a display of block just so this stretches a hundred percent. And do I have a font size here as well? Let me see. Actually, I don't. Uh, this doesn't look exactly the same, but we can sort that out later. Um, yeah. So after the stats, 
what I want to do is target. Where's the button? Oh, the button is right here. We still have to add in the color for this button. So I remember it was, where are you? Right here. So here we have button normal and button pink. So back to the buttons. Here we can select button normal. And since this one is different from the others, uh, so it's going to be basically a general class in terms of the sizing of this particular element. Um, the font size here is going to be 1.8 rem. And then a padding is going to be 1.5 rem top and bottom, and then 3.6 rem left and right. So now as you can see that's taking effect. Now we just have to add in the color. So button pink. And here we can just use the background color, which is going to be the pink color like so. And then let's change the color as well for contrast, light color. We also want a hover effect here as well, pink. What am I doing? I can't type this correctly for some reason. But yeah, button hover. Again, same concept. We're going to use the HSL value for the pink right here. And we're going to boost up the lightness a little bit. Here we can just go ahead and do something like, let's do 70. And that looks pretty good. So right now, let me see, because I also had the button action. So button action, did I ever do the button action? No, I did not. Somehow it says skip. I skipped it. But let's take care of that right now. So button action is going to be a display of inline flex. And I'm aligning my items to the center and just define my content to the center as well. This is just for centering icons, for example, for buttons in the middle. And as you can see now, everything lines up properly and that's because the icon actually wasn't centered in relation to this. And this still has like a little bit of line height there. But again, we're gonna sort that out in a little bit. Let me just make sure so 100%. And this is 100% as well. Let me just boost it up to 125. Just so that it's a little, a little bit more visible on the screen. And I just book, bookmark that for some reason. Um, but anyways, what we're going to be doing next is some styling the rest of the stats here. So let's go back down. And once we get to the stats here, what we're going to do is select the stat count and then the category. Count. Category. This should be separate, by the way. So for this, what we're going to do again is more responsive typography. Since we already did this here, let's just save a little bit of time. And we can change the minimum value to 2.6. And then the maximum to 2, actually 4.2. Then for the line height, we can do 3.6. And then here, we can just copy this, paste it in here. And for the minimum, we're going to change this to 1.4. This can still stay the same. And then the maximum is just going to be 2 rem. For the line height, we can do 2.4. And one last thing that I want to do here is change the font weight. I'm actually going to put it underneath of here. And this is going to be the variable of font weight normal. 
So now it looks slightly lighter uh, compared to the other one. And I'm missing the plus here. So let's just add it in right now. Plus. Plus. And plus. So that looks slightly better. And I also have to select this button and add a margin bottom. So right here, let me actually put it up here since it comes after the paragraph. So showcase button margin bottom is going to be 3.8, was it? 3.8. looks pretty good oh the paragraph actually had 2.8 not 3.8 so that looks a lot better already well this is way larger let me just see margin bottom oh this is a margin bottom not top and then the paragraph also had a line height. So that's what I was missing. So the line height here is 2.4 rem. So let's take a look at that. And now everything matches up. So back to this, we need to select the um, this image right here. And I might have messed up somewhere. Example, let me just double check right here. So this is the gap. That we have, which is something that we don't have here. Yeah, we, we definitely are missing the gap here. And this gap is showcase container. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure I applied it though, or maybe I did it wrong. Let's double check. Showcase container, of course, I missed adding REM to it, and that's why it's not showing up. Uh, but now it is, so everything looks good. So let's go ahead and add in the media queries now for this particular uh, portion. So again, um, we're going to start with a smaller one for this one. So let's go all the way back to, to the bottom. We're going to say add media screen and mid width. And this one is going to be 23.5 EM. And here we just want to select the showcase image group image. And then the margin inline here is going to be set to auto just so that we center the image in the middle when it's not on the really small viewport. Like for example, here stays in the middle as opposed to coming all the way to the right. Even though we're going to switch that later anyways. Then for the next break point, this one is going to be 37.5. And then I'm going to select the text group. So showcase text group. And I want this to span three. So grid column span three. Let me actually just make it slightly bigger so that you guys can see the changes. So here I can just make it span three so it doesn't keep growing like you see right there. And now we can focus on the main media queries, which is going to be 48 EM and then 64. Let me just grab this, duplicate it down below and this one, 64. So what we're gonna do in here now is select the showcase. Padding top is going to be 
increased, so calc, and then var, again, nav height, then times two, then plus 9.2 rem. Again, let me just make it bigger so that it reflects the changes here, as you can see. Then we're going to also increase the padding bottom. And this one is going to be 10.4. So you can see right there. Then we're going to select the showcase text group so that we can change it up a little bit. Text group. And then here, the grid column. Let me actually open up the inspector so that I can showcase what's going on. So as you can see here, we have the grid. What I want to do is start at number two, and then I want to span all across to six. Well, not to six, but I want it to span six after that. So it's going to be around here. So start two and then span to six, like so. We also want to text align this to the center. And for the showcase title, we are going to go ahead and increase the line height. And we're going to make it 5.6 rem. Then I'm going to select the paragraph and I'm going to make it slightly larger. And the font size here is going to be 2 rem. And the line height is going to be 3.2 rem. Now I'm going to target the showcase stats. I want to justify my content to the center. And then the text align is going to be to the left. What I want to do next is add, well, I already added it in. So in here, we want to change it up a little bit more. Let me just get rid of this now so that we can actually see what's going on. And I'll shrink this a little bit. I'll zoom it out, I should say, so that it looks better in terms of when it takes effect. So for this, we are going to select the showcase text group once more. The grid column here, we want it to just span six. So it's going to go back to the initial position. And then the text line is going back to the left. Showcase title here is going to have a margin bottom that is going to be two rem and a line height that is going to be 7.6. Run. For the paragraph, we're going to be adding in a larger margin bottom as well. And this one is going to be for rem. And then we're also going to add in a padding right of five rem, like so. Then we're going to target the showcase button. Margin bottom is going to be seven rem. And then finally, we just have the stats. So here we can say stats, justify content, left, like so. And um, that looks pretty good. So let me just compare it here to this. So right there looks good. So on, let me see. Yeah, so everything looks good right there. 
And um, what else? Oh, the image group itself. Let me just close this. I want to move this here to the right. So here I can say image group. And then I can say grid column span six. And now they're going to be side by side. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all there is for the header as well as navigation and the showcase. And we're almost done with part one. Uh, as I mentioned, now we're going to add in scroll reveal so that we can add in the on scroll animations, which is going to basically be this. So since we already know what it's supposed to look like and we finish this part, I can just go ahead and close it. And now I can make this bigger and we're going to go to Google and we're going to look for scroll reveal. So this is going to be their website right here. And I can actually just make this larger. Doesn't really matter at this point. So here you can look at their guide. They have a lot of details on how you can use it. So first, uh, what you're gonna do is include their CDN link. In this situation, it's going to be for the script. So you can just grab this. They also have examples here on like JS bin and whatnot. Uh, so if you wanted to, you can just grab that or you can just grab the link from here. It doesn't really matter. And you're going to be placing it on the head section. So back to VS code, let me just make this larger here. Let me just paste it underneath. And here we can say scroll view like so. Reveal. And back to their website, we're going to take a look at basic usage. So here, like I said, they go over like basic installation and whatnot. So here, like in production, you can use CDN, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, like I said, you can also customize it. But what we're going to do is go back to the API here. And the main constructor here, you can pass in some options. And um, the basic way that I'm going to do this is by, for example, let me just go back to VS code and here, inside of the JavaScript file, what I'm going to do is initialize a variable. So constant SR for scroll view. And then I can just say, it's going to be equal to scroll reveal And then here we can pass in some options and here, let's start with the distance. The distance is going to be 25 pixels. Then the duration is going to be 1500. This is going to be in milliseconds. So it's going to be 1.5 seconds. And then for the easing, I'm going to do a cubic Vessier and it's going to have the following values. So it's going to be 0 0.68 minus 0 0.55 point two six five and then 1.55. So now that we initialize that, we can actually start using it. But back to the website here, for example, they also have explanations for everything. So distance is just going to control how far the element uh, move when revealed. Then you have duration, which is going to control how long the animation is going to take to complete. And the easing that I'm using here is just a cubic bestier and it's just going to animate them um, in a fancier manner, I should say, if you do specify one, that is. Um, there's websites that can do that for you, like you can control the curves and whatnot. But they also have a lot of different things like interval, opacity, origin, and, and, and so on. So 
origin is going to specify the direction the element is going to come from revealed. Um, so in this particular tutorial, I'm only going to go over the ones that I just did because that's everything that we're going to be using um, for this project. We're not going to be using anything else that you see right here. But yeah, we're using the constructor, um, distance, duration, easing, as well as the origin. So to actually use it now, what we want to do is, let me just close this. Oh, they also have um, um, options that you can specify based on the desktop view that you're on. Um, they have desktop, they have mobile, but like I said, we're not going to be doing, uh, we're not going to be using any of that right now. So we can just close it. So back in BS code, what I want to do now is use the SR and I'll say reveal. And then in here, what I want to do is pass in the elements that I want to um, apply the animation to either by ID or class name. So in this situation, I'm going to apply the animation to showcase text group like so then we separate it with a comma and then now uh, we just pass in we can pass in um, many different um, options if you want to but like i said we're only going to be doing origin here and the origin is going to be from the top then we can go ahead and do the same thing for the image group And this one is going to be from the bottom. And if we go back here, it should actually work. And it does, as you can see. And um, yeah, this is going to be it for part one. If you don't want to miss part two, make sure that you subscribe and turn on bell notifications. And thumbs up the video if you found it useful because it helps me a lot. I'll see you guys in the next video.